Now, now when we can jump, now when we can dance, we are going to serve our generation when we are young, when we are able. You must serve your generation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful sunny Sunday morning and we give God all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Today I'll be teaching on the lines of manifest in my generation we've had a week four days in his glory how many have been in our convention our holy convocation it has been a wonderful time and the theme was manifestation of the sons of god and we don't want to move too far from it we just want to continue with the same theme of manifestation and you know somebody can manifest when their generation has passed you can be a joshua and a caleb but we don't want to be Joshua and Caleb. We want to manifest in our time, in the time that God has made when we are young, when we have the energy, when we have the strength. And so please turn with me to the book of Judges, Judges chapter 6. In the book of Judges chapter 6, we'll see the Bible tells us of the story of Gideon. So from Judges 6 all through 8, is the story of Gideon delivering the children of Israel from the hands of the Midianites. And from verse 1, Judges 6, 1 says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens which are in their mountains and caves and strongholds. So they're in hiding. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and the camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Verse 7, and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thou saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drove them out from you, from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Let's jump to verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee. Now this is Gideon. Thou mighty man of valor. Verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt, but now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites? And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt serve Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Midianite, have I have not I sent thee? And he said with, unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I'll be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And we continue to see the story of Gideon. If you continue until chapter 8, we find how the Lord used Gideon and 300 men to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Midianites. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the revelation of your word. We thank you for the mysteries of your word that they are new every morning. Your mercies are new every morning. And we ask you, Lord, as we chew this word, may you open our minds and our hearts that may receive and that we may bring forth a hundredfold. We give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen, amen, amen. 
As I began, I said, I'm going to talk about manifesting in my generation. We find that God has placed us in a generation, in a time such as this. So you are born in this time, in this generation. Do not wish to be born in another time. You say, I wish I was born in the time of Adam. I wish I was born when Jesus was not. No, you have been born now and you have been called to manifest now in this time, in this day and age. And we're going to talk about three things that we need to manifest in our generation. And number one is construct. Now, there'll be a construction process that we will go through as the children of God in order for us to fully manifest. As we see Gideon, when, he, when the angel of the Lord came unto him, the first thing Gideon was asking is, why? How can you call me mighty man of valor? In verse 12, he says, the angel tells him, the Lord is thee, mighty man of valor. And the first thing Gideon asks, he said, Oh my Lord, if the Lord be thus, why, why has this befallen us? And we find that Gideon will have to start going through a construction process that begins with the inner man. Because so many of us are today and we have so many questions of why. Why and where and when and how. We keep asking God, why? Why am I as this? If you called me into ministry, why then am I walking and people are in Mercedes Benz? Why God am I still not, I cannot able to pay my rent. Why? Why? We keep asking the why. Yet the angel, where he's seen that Gideon, he, Gideon was found in hiding. He was hiding. He was in hiding. We find the angel found him there. Yet the angel called him mighty man of valor. So there are times when the Lord has spoken, has informed you of your assignment here on earth, but you're still stuck on the why. How many know that you, you can be stuck on the why to the point that you cannot move forward? You cannot move to the next step in your life. You cannot move to fully manifest because you are stuck on why. So many people ask me all the time, if God loved me, why did this happen? Why did my father die? Why was I born an orphan? Why am I black? I wish I was white. Why, why, why? But we have never fully understood that God has sent his angels. He has sent his prophets to call us mighty man of valor. We are the ones, you are the one chosen to bring out your family. Because we see Gideon, he says, number one, I am poor. Gideon is telling the angel, I am poor. Now this microphone, please. I am not only is he poor, in his poor family, he's the least among his brethren. I don't know what you, if you know what I'm saying. Not, not only are you from a poor family, but he's the least. Like you know when you met the your family, yeah? The one who is not considered at all. When they, you know, like David, when they're calling, when the... Samuel came and they say, oh, bring your sons. And he's bringing all these sons. And he said, no, these have it. And he says, no, there's one more. Now this is Gideon. <laughs> Wait, the one even your parents have forgotten you exist. The one where your cousins have forgotten you exist. Eh, Nikona, cousin, ule, ule, pale. You're the least among your brethren. I thank God that he's not a respecter. Because the Bible says he uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He uses the least people of this world to manifest in the generation. In this generation, you have been called for a time such as this to bring out your family. Because trust me, Gideon's children later on were not called poor. Gideon's children later on were not called poor. Yet he was from a poor family. So the construction from, say number one is to construct. You must be constructed by God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9. We see where Paul is saying, are ye not carnal? And he continues to say, another and planteth and another and watereth. But number, verse 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Now you see a building needs to go co under construction. We find from the foundation to the fitting. Before we get a building such as this, it went 
a construction. And the construction process went through beating, went through fire, went through everything for you to fully stand. The word husbandry there, it actually means to manage carefully. So God is managing you carefully. When you're busy asking your wives, when you're saying we have heard that we were brought from, from Egypt, Gideon is saying, Izi Zilkwama story. These were stories of our ancestors that you brought us out of Egypt. And now here we are, we are constantly in hiding. What happened? If that is not you today, you're reading the word of God, you're saying, now these stories and these stories, nothing is manifesting in my life. These have become stories to you. Gideon was living in that time, and at that time he was full of doubt. We must remove doubt from our lives to fully manifest in this generation. Can I get a hallelujah? Amen. Not sleeping on me this morning. I know I always have a sleepy crowd. I don't know if you wake up too early. So your questions of life, your insecurities, your doubts, this is when they come into process. They come into this construction process where you can be constructed by God himself. The Bible says you are God's husbandry. So it is God who is constructing you, not your mother, not your father. It is God himself, whoever and however he'll choose to construct you, you are being constructed to serve your your generation not to be passed by time not to be passed by wakati when you're 80s when you know oh, i'm going to serve my generation with what strength no now now when we can jump now when we can dance we are going to serve our generation when we are young when we are able you must serve your generation we cannot say manifestation of the sons of God and we stay there and we stay. We are still, as Paul said, are you not carnal? Ephesians. The more you went into the tabernacle, when you got out of the outer courts, you were many. The holy place, only 12 were allowed. Only 12 priests. So the more you continue with your walk with God, you have to cut off some people. You have to cut off some things. You have to deduct. I said number two is to deduct. There are some areas you will not go in your destiny, in your walk with God when some people are still holding you back. When some people are still holding on to you. When you're still listening to the voices of those who are fearful and afraid. When you're still listening to the doubters in your life. There are so many doubters in this area. So many people are so doubtful. And most of them are even your family members. Hi, are you sure? They remind you, you know we are poor. <laughs> they remind you. At this point, Gideon was still poor, but he had gone through the construction process. But now God tells him, deduct these people. And you find out later that God wanted his glory. His glory he shall share with no man. No man shall come near the glory of God. So when there's some things also you have in your life that you need to remove because they are competing with the glory of God. Your plan B's and everything, they're competing with the glory of God. Oh, I will need my MCA is the one who will give me 100,000. You are there competing. God needs his glory for it is his and his alone. We serve a jealous God. Hallelujah. And out of those 22,000, <laughs> when 10,000 were left, God said, these are still too many. And he told Gideon, take these people to the river. Let's continue to read from verse 4, chapter 7, Judges chapter 7. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water. This is after 22,000 have left, now 10,000 have left. There are still too many. They shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down unto their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. 
So we see that now God continues to give instructions. How you drink water? <laughs> Some manners the Lord will not allow. <laughs> Some manners will not be allowed in the presence of God. You know, <laughs> you know, lately we've been with Kina Bishop Greg all the way from America. And you know, I found your table and etiquette manners have become very important. The moment you see Tunaishika, <laughs> you're eating chicken, you know. And and God now here, he continues to find, he tells Gideon, those who lap like a dog. <laughs> There's a, so he continues to deduct. Again, remember the Midianites are like grasshoppers. And here is the Lord deducting from the army. And there remain 300 men. Now 300 men proceeded to go into war with Gideon. And they carried everyone, won his trumpet. And they carried a cistern and they went into war with the Midianites. And they surrounded them. And we come to the, oh my goodness, time. And we come to point number three, which is impact. We cannot impact our generation until we've gone through the construction, until we've gone through the deduction. And now we come to the impartation. Now we impact so we can fully manifest. Wherever you are, you are called to impact. Tell your neighbor, I am called to impact. Your life needs to be a life of impact. Wherever, whether you're in the line of the bank, whether you're withdrawing and Pesa, whether you're sitting in an Uber, wherever you are, you are impacting. Apostle Dazach, he taught us during the convention, he said, God does not rule on the earth. Did you get that point when he was preaching? God does not rule on the earth. He uses the church to rule I don't know if that changed your life. That, you know some statements, somebody just gives you a statement and it completely turns your life. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> God rules in heaven <laughs> and then he uses you to rule on the earth. So when we're busy in asking, why are there earthquakes? Why are there calamities that have nothing to do with God? God is using you to ensure there are no earthquakes, to ensure there are no typhoons in the Philippines, to ensure that we'll not be hit with famine here in Kenya. God is waiting for you to impact your space, for you to impact your generation. Waiting to use you. He will not move until there is somebody who is ready. God, use me. I am here. When you are working in uh, your impartation, uh, when he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. Somewhere working. Working. Working somewhere. We need to be somewhere impacting our generation, moving the times, moving everything that needs to be moved, shaking everything that needs to be shaken, that our generation may fully walk into the perfect will of God and align with the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And to say like Mikasila, say my amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh my, this time is going so far. Gideon delivered the whole children, all of them, the, all the children of Israel were delivered from the hands of the Midianites by this man called Gideon. A man who was poor. A man who was the least among his brethren. Yani wakudarauliwa kabisa. Usha darauliwa hadi useme, eh, nyo leo ni medarauliwa. I remember growing up, I am a last born. Now, last borns, we have no opinion to the matters of the state. <laughs> to matters of the family, nobody cares about your opinion. How many are last borns? La oh, Pastor, oh, Reverend Rick. Oh, we are, we are many last borns here. Now, I'm a last born of eight. And if there's one thing my siblings used to alienate me from, I was, I was very good in telling on them. Like, I was so good. I was gifted in telling on them. Like, if something happened, I was the first to inform my parents, Bishop John Charles Muyu has been doing this and that. <laughs> that was my work. And as I grew, I was hated more and more by my siblings. In fact, they'll do things... And they're like, and I'm lo literally looking at them. I'm like, baby, baby, I was called baby. Baby, baby, 
يعني <تصفيق> to be the least among your brethren to be the least among your brethren nobody will come and ask oh baby what are we eating today nobody will ask you such questions they'll be asking the older ones what do you think we should eat what, what do you think we, where do you think we should go today hey, when it's family day out oh they're asking the big ones can I, prophet daniel where do you think we are going nobody asked baby but I thank God that this baby, hallelujah, oh, come on, somebody. I thank God that this baby today matters concerning the family. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Matters concerning Moyo family. I am very much involved. I am very much consulted. Come on. Do you see any other reverend woman in our family? <laughs> Is there any reverend woman, Moyo, over there? It's this baby. And so I thank God that God uses the least among your brethren. And before even Bishop died, he used to consult me on heavy matters until I asked him, wow, you're asking me. Let me go and come back. I'll, I'll come back with an answer for you. That I, I could not believe that this is me. My father is asking me such a heavy matter. And God, what do you think we should do with the church concerning this? I'm like, oh, you're asking me or you're asking Johnny? Oh, you're asking me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and God uses matters that were the least. Matters that were foolish. Matters that were the only word. To confound the wise. So we have said, number one, you must go through the process of construction. You must allow God to construct you. To answer your whys and wheres and hows. Because Gideon was found a man who was in doubt. A man who thought the stories they had been told had just become stories. They are not realities. We must come to a point where we see the Bible is a reality. It's not a story. Every promise in here is yours. Is yours is yours. Every promise in here is yours to fulfill. Is yours to walk on. Is yours to come and say, Lord, I believe it. Lord, you said it. I believe it. I will walk it. It's not for others. It is not special for those ones. It's for the rich. It's not. It is for you. And you must be constructed. Your mind must be transformed by the word. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit to get this boldness. For the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Now, I don't know if you've seen a lion. It fears no man, no creature. Because the, the righteous are as bold as a lion. So we walk in this boldness because we've been constructed. And then we go through a process of deduction. So you, are, you deduct every person, everything that will take the glory of God in your life. Deduct Deduct it from your life. If it is your job and your salary that is taking God's glory, deduct it. <laughs> There's some, you know, in this economy, I don't know how people survive on salary. Because utapanga, upange, upangwingui, yani, nothing will happen. Like, hey, you start deducting luxuries in your life. You say, e Wi-Fi, I don't think we need Wi-Fi. It's a luxury. Yeah, I, you start deducting, I don't think we need oil. Maybe I can start eating boiled eggs. I don't need fried eggs. You start deducting that. Well, some things are good for your life. But some others, surely. We need to walk in faith. We cannot make it on salary. We cannot. You cannot make it on salary. You need to walk on absolute faith. Things that are taking the glory of God in your life. Where are you leaving space for God to manifest himself in your life? If you are depending 100% on that 20,000, by the time you are a kiare, you are a chaef, you mungu tithe, you are a kutuma ushago, imesha. But when you walk by faith, when you depend on God a hundred percent, God says this person has known the glory is mine. And when I step in, all the glory will come back to him. Then you've given God an opportunity to step into your life and fully manifest. So we must deduct these things that we are fully relied on. Gideon must have seen this, this 32,000 army and said, Where? Do you know 32,000? Like the whole of Nyaya Stadium full. That's an army. To 300. 300 is now like a second service here. <laughs> a 
I'm sure he wondered what is, what is going through the mind of God. But he deducted. And finally, we see that he came to a point where there was impact. The impact was felt. The impact was felt in his time until he died before the children of Israel fell again into somebody else's hands. Until Gideon died. So his whole lifespan, he spent it ministering to the children of Israel. His whole lifetime, the whole Israel was at peace. The, his whole lifetime. What can we say about your whole lifetime? In your whole, when you lived, we were at peace, we were prosperous. What can we say about your lifetime? When we come to read your obituary, what are we saying? What are we saying? How you impacted generations? How you impacted this time now? What can we say? May God help us. Construct, deduct, impact. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that is ever true and ever fresh. We ask your Lord that you may fill us, O oh God, with the manifestation of your glory. We ask you, Father, O oh God, that you may continue to work on us, for we are your husbandry. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Come and give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah.